Our scripture text is Hebrews chapter 12, verses 25 through 29. And I want to take a moment to share with you from the thought, serving the Lord with patience. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Would you pray with me, please? Most holy and gracious Father, we come to your table in hunger, in need of your feeding. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. Allow your word to take root in our hearts, that we would be the vessels of honor that you have called us to be. That as we digest and receive your word, that we will be doers of your word and not hearers only. For this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and all of God's people said, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The word patient. I want to read a, a few definitions to you in hopes that this would help put the sermon in perspective for all of us. Patient, bearing pains or trials calmly or without complaint. Manifesting forbearance under provocation or strain. Not hasty or impetuous. I like that word, impetuous. Steadfast despite opposition, difficulty, or adversity. Able or willing to bear Steadfast despite opposition, difficulty, or adversity. Regardless of what happens, no matter how bleak it may be, remaining steadfast, remembering that God said, and whatever God says, it will come to pass. God's word doesn't change because our circumstances have changed. God's word is solid, it's concrete, it's immutable, it's unmovable. Thus, in our text this morning, I read in your hearing about God speaking and his voice, his word, shaking all that can be shaped. God's word does not change. It will remain until the end of time. Serving God with patience. Time seems to be moving 
at what appears to be a rapid rate. We live in a time where patience is quickly no longer becoming a virtue. We want things with instance, with swiftness, and we want it now. We want what we want, when we want it, and that's the end of that. But patience is still a virtue, especially for those of us who walk with Christ, those of us who are children of God. We will endeavor to experience some difficulty. Difficulty by which but is designed to pressure, to test, to uh, certify our faith in God. The troubles that we face. The Bible shares with us that the tests and trials are for the perfecting of our faith. To be patient is to understand that no matter what happens, God is true to his word. It doesn't matter how I feel about it. What matters is did God say it, and if so, then it will come to pass. Our text points out for us in the beginning of the 12th chapter reminding us that we are not alone in this journey. There are many who have come before us who have endured difficulties, who have faced trauma, who have even been on trial. But they did not waver from their faith and their belief in God. They did not waver in the word of the Lord and his promises to them. They understood that these things that we are experiencing, these things that we are encountering by nature is meant to sway us from God and thus we are choosing to walk even more circumspectly with God. Serving the Lord today, some would even say is far different than what it was in the days of scripture. Because after all, things were seen to be a little bit more simpler back then. Today there's so many complexities that get in the way. Our schedules are so tight between work and family and extracurricular activities and, and vacations and all the other things. Then, then to throw in there the church. Wow, the church. This is why serving the Lord with patience is so vital and important. Because some time ago, we all were once sinners without a path to safety. We were all living life on uncertain terms. We were all at some point an enemy of God. Someone took time to share the gospel with us. Could it be that as a child we were brought by the hand into the church by our parents or grandparents, aunts or uncles, and it was there in that moment as a child that we began to hear about the stories of Jesus. We began to receive the good news of the gospel. Could it be that just maybe we were living life and we were out in the society and a circumstance happened that awakened us to the reality that God's grace was upon us. When we should have been injured or even maimed or killed in a car accident, God saw fit that we avoided the accident altogether and that caught our attention. Could it be that you were at work one day and one of your co-workers just out of the 
kindness of their heart gave you a word of encouragement that made you recognize that there was more to life than what life had to offer you. And it was then that you came to the Lord. Whatever way your journey brought you to Christ, someone took time out to share with you the good news and the experience of Christ. It could have been a grandparents or even your parents praying for you. Maybe, just maybe, you were the wayward child in the family or some will call the black sheep of the family. You did things differently. You were unconventional in your own way. Worried your parents half to death and they couldn't help but to pray. They couldn't help but to call on the name of Jesus and hope that one day you too will come unto the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, today, you're saved and sanctified, filled with the precious Holy Ghost. Do you carry that same patience for others as others have carried for you? When God speaks, the expectation of God speaking to us is an instantaneous revelation of the Lord. If God says he's going to do it, we want it done right now. But what happens when God speaks and the word that he spoke in your life, in your heart, time began to set its course. And it seems like by every waking day, it's almost as if God's word is not coming to pass. We begin to lose patience. We arrive at a place where we don't want to endure like a good soldier. We begin to question if we heard from God or if it was truly the word of the Lord spoken in our hearts. Because time can be an enemy of our faith. After all, it's been days, weeks, months, years. And it seems as though that just maybe God is not going to honor his word. We must hold true that the work that God has begun in us, he will complete it. We must endure because this journey is not given, the prize of our journey is not given to the swift nor to the strong but unto the one that can endure to the end. Oh, I understand. I do understand that when life happens to us, we will begin to question some things. We will begin to wonder where God stands in our lives. But know this, God's faithfulness is true. Because whatever it is that we face, we face it with God. Whatever it is that we enduring, we are enduring it with the Lord. With his strength and, and with his grace on our lives. Every day, you make it. Every day, he wakes you up. Every day, he keeps the blood flowing warm through your veins. Some of us may wake with aches and pains. Some of us may, may have circumstances that just don't seem to want to go away. But guess what? God is still faithful. Because every day you have a different perspective on how to deal with that circumstance. How to overcome that trial. Remember his word. We are more than overcomers through him that love us. And every day that we're able to open our eyes and call on the name of Jesus, it's every day that we see how faithful God is to us. You thought you couldn't make it. You, you just thought that this was it. You just may have to throw in the towel, but guess what? You didn't throw in the towel. And when you thought you couldn't go on, you're still going on. 
just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it got worse. Just when you thought there was no way out, you saw a crack in the door that would lead you out. You see, it's in the subtle the subtleties of God that begin to work in our life, that begin to manifest his glory in our lives. It's with those subtle moments that our patience becomes stronger and that we begin to realize that there is hope and that hope lies within us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So we need to serve the Lord with patience and recognize that when trouble comes, when it's knocking on your front door with a suitcase by its side, sometimes it bombards, our, it, it, it bombards its way into the door and it makes home with us. It, it makes residence with us. That's okay. Because weeping may endure for a night. But joy will come in the morning if we remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the things of the Lord. Don't lose sight and don't lose focus on your purpose with God because God has not lost sight on us. He has not forgotten us. He has not forgotten his word. He has not forgotten his promises. Oh, I understand. Why does trouble have to come to your house? Because if it doesn't come, you'll never understand how good God really is. If we don't endure, if we don't face some trouble, we would never be able to recognize the grace of God that's on our life. We would not have a testimony to share with others of the goodness of the Lord and his faithfulness toward us. The Bible says there's new mercies that we see every morning. We saw it this morning. It was testified to that as you came into the household of faith, the resounding message from everyone is that today is a good day. It's a good day in spite of our troubles. It's a good day in spite of our struggles. It's a good day in spite of life. We heard a testimony about a loved one in, in Maui. It could have been tragic, but by God's grace, they are all right. Now, everybody didn't make it. I'm sorry, but by the grace of God, somebody made it. And we can testify to that. The question is, how are your patience with God? Are you remaining steadfast, unmovable? Are you willing to serve the Lord with gladness in spite of life itself somebody took time out of their life to pray for you somebody took time out of their life to call your name before God to make sure that God knew your name and that someone would be able to speak a word of life and salvation to you that you might be the recipients of God's gift someone took the time out to intercede on your behalf. To introduce you to Christ. How much time have you taken out of your life for someone else? Our service to the Lord is not us coming together on Sunday morning for worship. But it's being able to testify to others of how good God is to us. Things may not be ideal. It may not be the way we want them to be. But, be, but thanks be unto God, they're not as bad as they could be. So let's make it our destiny to share this gospel, this good news, with patience to others who know not the Lord, who know not his grace the way we do. And don't forget, you're not the only one that made it through it. You're not the only one going through. 
There are others that have come before us. Great giants of the faith that we're able to stand on their shoulders. We're able to read their stories. We're able to see what God has done in their lives. What he's done for one, he will do for another. He is not a respecter of persons. So let's rejoice in his faithfulness. Let's rejoice in the God of our salvation. Let's rejoice in knowing that he who has begun a good work in us is able to perform it even against that great day. So let us run this race with patience. And like a good soldier, let us endure hardness. Because our general, our God, is yet faithful to us. God bless you all.